interval estimation. Now an in interval estimation, we're trying to construct an interval or range of values that our population parameter is likely going to be in. So for example, we want to create a range of values that our population mean or population proportion has a high likelihood of being inside of that range of values. Now an in interval estimate has two parts to it. It's the point estimate plus and minus a margin of error. So for example, if we want to construct an interval estimate of the population mean, we take the point estimate of the population mean, which is the sample mean, and we add and subtract the margin of error. Now, we already know how to compute the sample mean, so in this section, we're going to be focused on calculating the margin of error. We're going to start by constructing interval estimates of the population mean when the population standard deviation is known. This is called the sigma known case. When constructing an interval estimate of the population mean, we have a sigma known case and a sigma unknown case where the population standard deviation is unknown. When constructing an interval estimate, we want to choose what's called a confidence level which is the likelihood that our interval contains the population parameter. The most commonly used percentage for the confidence level is 95%, but 90% and 99% are also common. Now in our calculation of the interval estimate, we use the decimal form of the confidence level which is called the confidence coefficient. So if our confidence level is 95%, our confidence coefficient is 0.95. If the confidence level is 90%, the confidence coefficient is 0.90. And if it's 99%, the confidence coefficient is 0.99. Now, if our interval estimate is constructed at a 95% level of confidence, we call it a 95% confidence interval. Similarly, if our interval estimate is constructed at a 90% confidence level, we call it a 90% confidence interval. And if it's at 99%, a 99% confidence interval. Now the formula for constructing an interval estimate of the population mean when sigma is known is x bar, the sample mean, plus and minus z alpha half times sigma, the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of n the sample size. Now typically when we're computing an interval estimate of the population mean, we're given the sample mean, the population standard deviation, and the sample size. So all we're left to find is z alpha half, which is what we'll discuss now. The first step in finding z alpha half is to find alpha half. And we start by setting 1 minus alpha equal to the confidence coefficient. So we set 1 minus alpha equal to the confidence coefficient to find alpha half. Then 
z alpha half is the z value providing an area of alpha half in the upper tail of the standard normal or z distribution. So z alpha half is the z value with an area of alpha half in the upper tail or to the right in the z distribution. Now remember, our z distribution gives us the area to the left, not the area to the right. So one of the steps we will need to take is to find what the area to the left is when the area to the right is alpha half. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose we're told that the sample size is 40, the sample mean is 25, and the population standard deviation is 5. And we're asked to compute the 95% confidence interval. So since we're given sigma here, the population standard deviation, we know that it's the sigma known case. So we use this formula here, x bar is 25, plus and minus z alpha half, which we're not given, we'll have to find, times sigma, which is 5, over the square root of n, which is 40. Now the first step to finding z alpha half, we set 1 minus alpha to the confidence coefficient, which again is the decimal form of the confidence level, 95%. So it's 0.95. So from here, we want to solve for alpha half. We can get alpha equals 0.05. Then dividing by 2 on each side, we get 0.025. So our alpha half is 0.025. And our z alpha half is the z value with an area of 0.025 to the right. Now, our z table gives us the area to the left of z values, not the area to the right. So we have to figure out what's the area to the left of z alpha half. Now we can use a little trick here. We know the total area is 1 under the standard normal distribution. So if the area to the right is 0.025, the area to the left will be 1 minus 0.025, which is equal to 0.975. So now we could look at our z table. We have two sides, a negative side and a positive side. Now we want to look at the positive side since our z alpha half is to the right of 0. So we look for 0.975 in the middle, which is here, and we match it up with the z value. The last digit is 6, and the first two digits are 1.9. So our z alpha half is 1.96. So we get 25 plus and minus 1.96 times 5 over square root of 40. Now we can put this in our calculator. And for the right side, we get 1.55. Now remember, what's to the right of the plus and minus is called the margin of error. So 1.55 is our margin 
of error. And when we do this calculation, we get 23.45 to 26.55. So our 95% confidence interval is 23.45 to 26.55. Now our interpretation of this interval is that there's a 95% chance that our population mean is between 23.45 and 